Welcome back. We are in section seven and we're working on patterns. What we're going to do is work with something really, really simple to get the basic idea down. Of course, um, you can use these principles to create something much more complicated. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to choose the circle tool, the ellipse tool, um, by clicking L and I'm going to make a oblong circle, oval. And I am zoomed way in, just so you can see. And I would encourage you to try to create your pattern about the size that you're gonna want it to be. So if we're creating a mesh, we obviously want it to be really, really small. Um, and the reason for that is, even though you can change the size of your pattern after you create it, it is just a little bit easier to use and it's one less step if it, it's the size that you are attempting to portray. So let's take our oval and we're gonna go into object pattern make. Now, as I said in the last video, you can drag and drop it into your swatches panel to do the same thing. However, I tend to do it this way just to make sure I'm not missing any of the steps or options that I can choose. So I'm going to first click on my object. I'm going to go under object in the top menu and I'm going to hit pattern make. It's going to come up with a dialog box that lets you know that it is now added to the swatches panel. So even if I don't change anything about it, I just have it how it is. It's already been added as a swatch. So if I hit done right now, the swatch is already added over here. But what we want to do is we want to make some changes. You can name your pattern. Um, I would definitely encourage you to do so if you're using a bunch of different patterns and you want to stay organized. We're going to use this pattern tile tool at the top. And what that's going to allow you to do is change the spacing in between the objects that are repeating. You can see that now we have the ability to grab onto these um, anchor points that have shown up after we've clicked this. So I want to create some spacing between these. And you can take a look in the guide for the spacing that I have used. I want it about equal from vertically and horizontally. I'd say that's about good. And then what we're going to do is we're going to change how it is repeating. So by default, it is in grid. And what we want to do is change it to brick by column. And what that's going to do is just offset every other row. And that is going to give us that repeat pattern that looks like a mesh. And that's what we're after. You can make other changes, obviously. There's a ton of other options in here. I usually only use just this brick by row, brick by column, grid, hex by column, and change that around. I usually don't use these other um, these other options, but you definitely can, especially when you're starting to work with much more complicated patterns. Play around with them, see what you like to do. So what we're going to do is go ahead and I'll just name mine mesh. And I'm going to, you can either save a copy, and that will keep what I was talking about before, just how it was bricked before we changed anything. That will keep one of those, and you can see it says new pattern. Or you can say done, and it will replace this with all the changes that we have made. Again, you can also choose cancel if you want to just get rid of everything that you've done. I'm just going to hit done. Now we can go ahead and check to make sure that our pattern is how we want it. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm just going to um, create a square. And I'm going to fill it with the pattern swatch. All I did was just click on 
this pattern swatch and you can see as you hover over it, it says mesh, which is what I named it. And that is definitely the look that I'm going for. Looks great. So if you wanted to add this to your library, all you need to do is follow the same steps that we've gone over in the last couple sections. You're gonna go up to this right hand menu and you're going, going to go down and you're going to choose Save Swatch Library as an ASE. You can go ahead and name your Swatch Library. And just as we've talked about in the other sections, you'd want to delete all of these other swatches if you don't want them included in your library. So maybe you had a few different colors of mesh or a few you know, different patterns that you wanted, you'd want to delete all of these other things and it won't delete them permanently. You can just use the trash can down here. It will just delete them from this Illustrator file and therefore from your library that you're creating from this Illustrator file. So you can go ahead and name your library that you want to save. Mine's already in swatches, but I have um, the path that you want to save under if it's not just defaulted to where um, to where it should be saved. So you would just go to the en underscore us and go into swatches and we can click save. Now it'll come up with this dialog box and I have um, also included this in your guide, but if it has anything, any swatches that are containing these um, any of these gradients, patterns, or tints, they're not exchangeable. And you might run into some errors if you're opening them somewhere else. And if you are doing something like that and you want to use, you want to be able to exchange them or what have you, um, you can go ahead and go back under your menu and instead save it the swatch li library as an AI file. So now I can go down into my library icon and under user defined, I'll see my test library. And you can see that it does save all of those other, um, all of those other swatches that were in here. And because the swatch that I created is an ASE, it is not going to populate into here. And that's what I was just talking about. So we would have to go in and we would have to save it as an AI. Now we can see this other um, file that was under here. I named them the same thing, but now I can pull up the um, pattern that I created. And you can see that the other like gradients and stuff that were in here are now showing up in that library. So just be aware of that if you're not just creating a color swatch that you have to save it as that other option. They're just right next to each other.